Hi class, it's Dr. Lindner. In this next brief video, we're gonna be talking about the motivational interview. And when we talk about the interview process, it should be inspiring, should be motivational. And in order to do that, remember the first step is identifying what type of personality the client that we're working with has so that we can connect with them. Remember, before we correct, we have to be able to connect. No correction before the connection is made with, with the client. Now, one of the things that you can see is the posturing. Just look at the body language here, right? You can see that they're both engaged. They're both kind of leaning in towards one another. That's a real positive finding. Otherwise, we start to look at individuals like this with the crossed arms and the crossed legs and, you know, look at the facial expressions. They're both closed off. So when you have this closed off posture, it can indicate hostility, unfriendliness, anxiety, apprehension. When we see someone in an open posture, it indicates more friendliness, openness and willingness. And especially in our field, the, will the willingness to change, the willingness to make adjustments, the willingness to take the advice, to take the guidance. So when we do a motivational interview, it needs to be empathic, right? We wanna be empathetic to the individual. We need to be gentle in a skillful style of counseling that helps practitioners have these productive conversations with the people that we're caring for, okay? and some of the essential characteristics of the motivational interview, it needs to come across in a fashion where we have the ability to express empathy through reflective listening or hearing, right? We don't want to listen in the sense of a negative connotation when something is listing, it's leaning to one side, meaning we don't want to be biased. We want to avoid any type of debates or any type of argumentation and have this attitude where we just kind of roll with the resistance. We want to encourage the client's belief that, that they can change, that they have the ability to change. Communicating respect for and acceptance of people and their feelings, kind of meeting them where they're at. We know where we want to take them, but in order to go to point B, we have to know where they are at point A. We need to know what the obstacles are. We need to kind of provide them with the tools to overcome those obstacles so that they can make the change and not lose you know, the, their momentum, not lose the faith in their abilities. We want to um, establish this, this non-judgmental demeanor right? Have this collaborative relationship with them. We want to be supportive and knowledgeable. We want to compliment them. We don't want to denigrate them. You know, everything is, oh, that's another bad food choice. Oh, I can't believe you bought you those type of vitamins, right? And those minerals. Oh, you did your own research. <laughs> you know, you, you, you took that because you read that on Dr. Google. So um, there's ways of making them aware of perhaps some of the poor choices, but you always want to make a deposit in the bank before making a withdrawal, okay? Um, we want to have good hearing skills, good listening skills, rather than constantly telling them. And you see the word, you know, hearing and listening. And in a previous video, I did explain that when we're hearing, right, we're using our ears, but hear, is like being here in the present moment, present moment, present time consciousness. We don't want to be listed. We don't want to be listing to one side. When a boat lists, it tilts to one side. We don't want to be biased. We want to be open. So if we're, we're using the word listening, understand in the, connotate, in the right connotation of being positive, open-minded, non-judgmental, present time consciousness of being here in the moment with the individual. Gentle persuading, suggestions, suggestions with the understanding that change is ultimately up to the individual and providing support, 
through the process of whatever adjustments or modifications they want to make, you have to provide the right support and the right tools. And this is where a lot of the, the client or the patient handouts co come into play. So it is crucial that there be this collaborative conversation, this joint decision, the back and forth uh, between the practitioner and the client that we're working with. Ultimately, it's only the individual that's going to be making the behavioral and the lifestyle changes that are designed to improve uh, their health and their wellness. So the motivational interviewing techniques that we're going to use, it's referred to as ORs. The O is for open-ended questions. The A is for affirmations. The R is for reflective, reflecting or reflective statements. And the S is for summaries. So below, these are just some examples of asking uh, the right open-ended questions that demonstrate sincere and genuine interest and respect for the individual. But it's designed to kind of let the individual kind of go a little bit deeper and provoke some thought. So instead of saying, oh, how are you feeling today? We want to have more of this concept of salutogenesis right, where it encompasses mind, body, spirit, that there's so many different concepts to health and wellness. And we don't want to just focus on how they're feeling. There's many people that feel great have died the next day. And in discussion, they felt wonderful. They didn't have any signs or symptoms leading up to it. But we also want to focus on not only how they're feeling, but how are they functioning, mind, body, and spirit, bowel movements, sleep, thoughts, all of those are included in functioning. We could have uh, an open-ended question like, well, what's important to you right now? Or, hmm, you know, that's interesting. Tell me more. It's an open-ended question. Um, or how did you manage that in the past? Or how would you like things to be different? Uh, if I had a magic wand and um, I can make anything better tomorrow, what would be that first most important thing, right? That's going to be the, the focus. Um, what will you lose or gain if you give up this, right? If you give up a uh, dairy or you have to give up cheese, what are the, what are the gains from that, right? So they can work through this deeper thought of, okay, maybe losing in order for me to gain this, I need to lose this. Or, how can I help you with that? These are wonderful open-ended questions. Uh, on a scale of one to a hundred, how motivated are you? Or um, how confident are you that you can follow through with this plan or these suggestions? Oh, I'm a, a seven, seven and a half. Wow, that's amazing. Seven and a half, it's not a zero. But what would make it a 10? What's, what's that gap that's missing? OK, so it's the, it really does allow for a deeper conversation in terms of the A for affirmations. Right. We always want to make deposits in the bank before taking out money. Always make a deposit before withdrawal. You can say something like, wow, I'm really glad you brought that up. Wow, that's a that's a very inquisitive question. That's a, I, no one has ever asked me that before. That's fantastic. Or uh, I think what you're doing here is really difficult. But I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of the work that you're accomplishing. Um, you know, so many people avoid seeking guidance and help. It's a lot easier to live in this comfort zone and here you are here looking to make these changes. It says a lot about you and your willingness to take that initial step. And we are gonna take, you know, small, we're gonna take these small sequential steps. That's my philosophy. Small sequential steps will get there. Um, or what have you noticed about yourself in the past few months since you started coming here? Now, that type of question is designed to really allow them to kind of self-affirm. Well, I've noticed I have more energy. I've noticed my sleep is better, right? So these are creative ways of using affirmations. Now, the R, the reflective concept, this is really a pretty challenging skill. And you have to really listen and hear reflectively to your patient. And it really requires that you hear everything carefully. You're very observant. You're studying their body language, their behavior, and reflect using 
own words and perceptions. Using this skill effectively promotes the most movement in the client's awareness. This part of your intervention can help a client make more intentional decisions and to consider their behavioral changes. So the purpose of using the reflective hearing, the reflective listening is to demonstrate to the client that you've not only heard everything they're saying, but you're processing that information and you're trying to understand his or her situation. It offers the client an opportunity to hear their own words and their feelings and their behaviors mirrored back, right? Reflecting it back at them. It reflects their thoughts, their feelings, their behaviors. And hearing it from you, reflecting it back is different than them just saying it, okay? And reflect the client's general experience and the right there, the in the moment experience of the clinic visit. So you can see that it really requires careful studying of the individual, looking at their body language, their posturing, hearing the words that they said. Some, you know, I noticed that you said that you 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 hate you hate that food. Um, what do you mean by that when you said you really hate that or you hate doing it? And they may go, uh, hate's a really strong word. It's not that I hate it. I just don't have the right tools. I mean, perhaps if someone told me how to do it, it would make it easier. And then I wouldn't, you know, I'd be an expert at it, right? Like, um, no one that bowled a strike said, I hate bowling. It's the, the one that rolls the gutters. I hate bowling. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> um, so in terms of the reflective listening and hearing, so simple reflection, just repeat the client's words. Now, the reflective feelings is you're trying to reflect what the client might be feeling based on your processing of it, all right? I, I think you're feeling this way because of that, right? That's, that's, that's a great, simple, very basic, easy way of doing it. But you have to be processing the information and kind of trying to problem solve quickly. And they may get defensive about it. Right. You don't want to get into this hot debate. Oh, you know what? You're probably right. You know, that was just my perception. But I think I understand what you're saying. Um, reflective behavior. Right. You're stating an observation about their behavior. I noticed you just blank. You know, like I noticed you just crossed your legs. I noticed that your eyes kind of looked up. I noticed that your voice kind of changed and got a little bit high pitched, like it was under a little bit of distress, you know, what are you thinking? Or what are you thinking right now? Uh, amplified reflection, right? You wanna rephrase the client's words and really exaggerate it so like it hits them and impacts them differently than their own words when they used it themselves with their tone. Now there's double-sided reflection, which is the client's words. Like, yeah, I'm really motivated to change. Yeah, I, I really am. I can't wait to start this, but I, I've noticed that when I asked you on a scale of one to 10, how motivated do you feel? You said like a six, right? So there's, I'm pointing out the ambivalence, the, the hesitancy, right? You want to point out the, that it's not quite congruent. They're not in alignment. There's a discrepancy there. And rolling with resistance, right? You can accept the client's perception. Okay, they're not ready yet. I'm not going to push him. I don't want to, I don't want to push them too quickly. They're un getting uncomfortable. Don't want to do that. They're not ready for this. So cool. We're going to take one step at a time. Let's focus on this for this visit. Right. And then reframing. What this does, it invites the client to examine his or her own perception in a different way. Now, summarizing. Right, We did the O, the A, the R, and the S. So the summary can have different purposes. And here's different ways. It, it, it can highlight the important aspects of a discussion. Right, You're summarizing everything that you've promised. And you're going to focus on the most important aspect of that entire interview. You can summarize to shift the direction of the conversation if it's become kind of stuck in a certain direction. You can use that time to summarize and kind of redirect back. It can highlight both 
their both sides of uh, an individual's ambivalence about their change, right? You're summarizing that, wow, you know, you said this, you said that, you thought that this was a great tool, you kind of loved adding these things to your uh, to your diet, you certainly seem quite motivated to eliminate that. We found a good balance between both. We found some solutions here. Um, but yet, there seemed to be a little hesitancy here, right? So now you're kind of summarizing that, and it can help redirect the plan. It communicates interest and understanding of their perspective of things where where they're at at the very end okay and again in a non-judgmental way so here's just you know a simple example of summarizing something that maybe you've heard from the client so it sounds to me like you feel comfortable with the nutraceuticals you recommended you felt comfortable with uh you know implementing the mediterranean diet you didn't have any issue with eliminating coffee and substituting it with this or eliminating the dairy and, and substituting with this. You seem to be in alignment with the exercise and the daily walks or adding the meditation. But what you're telling me that it's just more difficult right now at the stage that you're in, in preparing your own meals at this time in your life. And then from that, the client feels like, wow, they've, they've gotten me. They've figured me out. They've gotten everything. I trust them. They're listening. They got me and we can work on a successful plan together. So hopefully you've um, absorbed a lot of good information here and it opens your eyes to these different uh, approaches in terms of asking the open-ended questions, knowing how to give affirmations, how to reflect and how to summarize the motivational interview. And you can find ways throughout the interview to implement these different parts. Once you're aware of it, you'll find the right places um, to implement them. And it should be very natural, very organic. Um, and you always want to be attentive to your client. Be careful not to be looking down at your notes when speaking. Always make sure you're making eye contact uh, with your client. And when they say something that's very meaningful, don't just say, mm -hmm, that's good, that's great. You know, like you have to have a little added, um, you know, TLC to what you're communicating back that reflects at all times that you are 100% attentive. And here are just some references. These are some great links that you can uh, utilize to freshen up on these skills.